This podcast is dedicated to those who have found their way from fear to freedom and for those who are considering undertaking this amazing journey. This is the Courage to Be podcast, and I'm your host, Tanya Vasallo. Before we get into this episode, I want to share an amazing opportunity, my signature event, Increase Your Income and Impact, which is happening this November 7th through the 9th in Santa Fe, New Mexico. You will walk away from this three-day in-person event, shifting your mindset from not enough money to manifesting on the spot. You'll also learn how to get over your fears, own your worth, so that you can have a greater impact in the world. This event is life transforming and already filling up. And don't take my word for it. Just go to our site and listen to what participants are saying. I'm gifting you an 80% discounted ticket. All you have to do is leave me a rating and review on iTunes take a screenshot and email us at help.thecouragetobe at gmail.com and type event discount to claim your discounted ticket. You can also find that email in our show notes. I look forward to being your mentor and guide and transforming your life. See you in Santa Fe. Welcome back to The Courage to Be, where we have powerful conversations to transform your life and your business. And today we have Tracy Litt with us. Welcome, Tracy. Thank you so much. I'm looking forward to just getting to know you a little bit better because I've seen several things on your bio and I'd like for you to share with us a little bit of your journey, you know, from what I've seen from single mom, food stamps to VP of human resources and CEO and founder of a seven figure personal growth company. So tell us about this journey because that's not a very common one. No, it's not. You know, I think the important thing to share is the reason that I found myself a single mother with an eight month old baby that then put me in that position to be on food stamps was because I didn't know what I know now. And I was deeply struggling with unworthiness and I was creating a life around me that was a match for that unworthy identity. So I ended up in a relationship that was beneath me, which then ended. And there I was with my daughter. And it wasn't until I allowed myself to feel, to go into the pain. There was one night that I talk about often that I ended up on the garage floor while Taylor was crying in her crib inside because I just couldn't listen to her anymore because I was so emotionally overwhelmed. And I fell to my knees and I cried my eyes out for two hours, like a really good catharsis. And when you allow yourself to feel, which is really important for everyone listening, the absence of your ability to feel your feelings is your biggest interference. And when I allowed myself to feel, there's a silence that happens after that depth of release. And in that silence, for the first time in my life, my highest self came through to me and made it very clear that I was either gonna perpetuate this victimhood and I know what that life's gonna look like, or I'm gonna choose something different for her, meaning my little girl inside that house. So in a lot of ways in that instance, she saved me and my ability to hear beyond my current self. And then I rose and I climbed the corporate ladder without a college degree because another part of my not enoughness was you're not smart enough. So I was one of those, I was like, oh, I don't need college, it's not for me, it doesn't matter. But really it's because I didn't perceive that I was smart enough and landed as a VP of HR. And then as I'm sitting there doing great work, finally hitting what they tell us, make six figures and own a house and have a car, maybe a kid and a fence and da, 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 da. And my soul was still dying. And it's because I wasn't allowing myself to tap into the vessel that I am in the calling and in sitting in that corporate job and allowing myself to let that soul's calling get louder and louder and louder and then listen to it is what then opened me up to finding human growth and potential. And it was like a wormhole. Like I know I all of a sudden I found it. What is this? And what is that? And oh my God. And it felt so resonant. I was like this, this is what I'm supposed to be doing with my life. And then I manifested a layoff from my corporate job and I launched my company and it has been absolute consistent growth and impact ever since. That is amazing. I want to dive deeper because th there were so many e points that you talk there, you know, worthiness, not enoughness. So let's start with worthiness. How do we start building that worth in ourselves? For you, it was very cathartic with that deep cry, Yeah. but do we 
have to allow ourselves to feel, to be, you know, all the way hit rock bottom? Or so is there another way to build our worth without having to go that deep? Oh, no, you're never going to be in your wholeness if you avoid going deep. Full stop. Don't even kid yourself. Don't waste your time. Surface work is not going to work at the level of your cells where the trauma is stuck in your body that is causing you to perceive that you are unworthy. You have to feel there is no choice unless you want to stay the same, which is a different kind of pain and a different kind of discomfort. And the most important thing that I need to say to your question is you don't have to work your way to your worth. The truth is, is that we are born whole and we are born fully worthy. The internal work that needs to be done is untethering from the lie and embodying the version of you that's already whole. And that's where the deep work goes. And, you know, it's so interesting because oftentimes people perceive deep work like, oh my, it's hard. I got to go somewhere and I got to heal and I got to this. And that's not it at all. You know, I founded the School of Becoming because we need new schools of thought and we need an environment that understands how to hold us and help us grow and evolve from our wholeness. One of the biggest issues in human growth and potential in the industry is that there's too much focus on fixing and problem and as if there's something wrong with you, you're a human being. You're alive listening to this podcast. Hello, you have trauma, belly up to the bar. That's the deal. And because of what it means to be human, because of what it means to be conditioned, because of your program, and then you wake up and you go, okay, wait a second, and you listen to a beautiful podcast like yours, and you realize, hold on, I can choose, I have agency, I can unbecome things, I can become the version of myself that I'm capable of becoming, quite frankly, the version of you that your dreams require you to be, because you can't generate different and stay the same. You have to change. And it's embracing that change as my guess, you know, instead of like you're saying, fixing, I want to go deeper into that part, Tracy, where you're saying, you know, you talked about what's expected of our culture, you know, of like, oh, you hit the six figures, you know, you have the white picket fence, like as you're yeah, saying, yeah. the baby, the husband, the whatever, whatever, you know, like fill in the blank yeah. and let's dismantle a little bit of that particular lie, like you're saying, you know, that might be a calling for one particular person, but not necessarily for the rest of us, you know? So how do we start going deeper into connecting to what our soul wants? And it might not be that white picket fence, that six figure owning a home. Maybe you want to rent, maybe you want to yeah. travel. Like, well, yeah. how do we tap into that part? First, we need to decide. And the reason why I bring up decision is because without a firm, convicted decision, you will live in the world of try and try doesn't do anything. To decide is to cut yourself off from anything but what you decided. So if the decision is I am ready to feel better, tap into my power, create that business, open to love, leave that marriage, whatever the things are, because it's because you're recognizing a dissonance in your life, right? You're not where you want to be. You're not feeling how you want to feel. You're not creating what you want to create. Something, right, has to call you to it. And then you decide. And then the reason, and then once you decide, you then do the work again and again and again and again and again and again and again. And again. Because evolution takes awareness and it takes choice and it takes patience and consistency. Because the more aware you become and the more you work within your body, the safer all of the things that you've been avoiding feel to come out and be witnessed and be processed and be released. So the first is decision. And the second is identifying the gap. So what's like I was sitting as a VP of HR going like, oh my God, at first my soul's dying, but where am I going? So there was nothing to decide on because I wasn't aware, I wasn't clear, like what is then the vision? So then being able to allow yourself to transcend your current identity to create that vision and figure out, okay, so if I was operating for my wholeness, if I was unwaveringly believing in myself, if I knew that it was all working out for my highest good, if I knew it was going to do exactly what I wanted it to do, what would I be doing? What would that vision be? And then you evolve your identity to become the version of yourself that lives in that vision. And that's the work you do with us in the School of Becoming. That's fabulous. That's so beautifully said. And 
Can you give us more examples, you know, because these terms, you know, they're more conceptual, you know, we're yeah. talking about abstractness and doing the work and going deep. And I know you have a particular case or one of the stories that I know about, which is putting down $55,000 on a contract. <laughs> Yes. When you first did a retreat, and I know the fear behind that because I've gone through that. I host retreats too. So talk to me a little bit about some more, you know, like what was that act of courage and believing in yourself and believing in that vision? Tell us that story. And if the, any other ones come to mind of how you've been doing the work throughout the process, or maybe even with some of your clients, you know, yeah. because when we have tangible stories, I think we can totally. learn deeper. Absolutely. Absolutely. I'm going to tell you this story. This is so good so and map yourself on it meaning like put yourself in the story i'm telling because ultimately the story i'm about to tell you is a story about doing something that was really unfamiliar that i had no evidence for that was asking me for a wicked leap of faith right and to lean into risk in a different way and to experience my fear differently okay which is important because every single one of us has a lot of stuff we want to do. And then we mistakenly let fear lead and we lose the courage and we stay the same. So one of the elements of my big vision in owning this company and helping women all over the globe was to have live events. And I knew that the live events I specifically wanted to have, I wanted to have luxury five-star diamond resort environments, luxe events, because of the other thing I know about women is you're terrible receivers until you learn how to receive. <laughs> so putting you in an environment that like forces you to take the support is really important. So I found the hotel. I was like, yes, this is it. And then the director of sales said, okay, great. It's time to come in and sign the contract. $55,400, basically meaning I need to sign this contract, put myself on the hook to pay $55,400 for the record. I didn't have the money. I didn't come from money. This was an absolute, like, oh my God. Okay. So the first thing I did was postpone the meeting. So this is important because this is how fear, fear plays with us. All of a sudden I was like, oh, Allison, I'm sorry. I can't meet with you. I have something going on. I had nothing going on. Okay. I have something going on. I can't make the meeting and I put it off. I put it off twice. And then I was like, okay, what would she do? I started tapping into the work that we teach. What would the version of you who already sold the event and the women were pumped to come, what would she be doing? She would go in there and she would sign the contract with confidence and excitement. Now, mind you, I didn't have a sales page yet. I'd never hold it, held an event at that level. And no one even knew that I was going to be doing an event. So this was a total leap of faith. So here's what the work looks like in that moment. First, the awareness. The awareness was, wow, Trace, you're pushing off this meeting. That's interesting. But this is something that you say that you want. So it was like a conflict between my current identity and the woman that I was becoming. And then I had to pause and go, okay, you know that generating your vision is about allowing her to lead her being my next level self the version of me that has live events all the time with ease well what would she do so and so first it's the awareness second i had to create safety and this is big and if you're really resonating right now please write this down change happens at the speed of safety change happens at the speed of safety and we are responsible to give our nervous systems the safety it needs in order to show up and be courageous and do the things that we say we want to do your system is never going to be on board without you being the leader of it and bringing it along for the ride so first awareness that i was avoiding the meeting next it was you're going to that meeting so let's make it safe so what does that look like it looks like having a relationship with your nervous system it looks like giving your nervous system love. It looks like tapping and breathing and chanting and dancing and oming and talking to your body, which we can do in a moment because it's really luscious and helpful. And then once that safety is created, asking, well, what would she do? And she is your evolved next level self. Your ability to manifest and generate everything that you are capable of and desiring and deserve is based in your ability to let your next level self lead now before the evidence is there, right? It's like letting her lead and letting reality catch up. Reality is the lag indicator. 
So really, really understanding, because one of the things that we all do, which is the interference, is we look down at the reality, right? Like, oh, there's the $55,000 contract. Do we have a signups? Do I have the money for it? Nope, I had nothing. It was an absolute trust fall. And as soon as you get the answer of what she would do, then you pause and you go do it. So I'll stop here. Tell me what's coming up for you. We're going to take a quick pause because this has so many good things with it. I want to share an amazing opportunity with you. My signature event, Increase Your Income and Impact, which is happening this November 7th through the 9th in person in Santa Fe, New Mexico. You will walk away from these three days, shifting your mindset from not enough money to manifesting on the spot. You'll also learn how to get over your fears and unworthiness so that you can have a greater impact in the world. These in-person events are life transforming. Just listen to what one of our participants has to say. Hi, my name is Kate. I'm an astrologer and came to this retreat. I got out a lot more than I expected, including a community of really great neural people. And I learned a lot about myself and how to grow my business. If you found this inspiring, if you'd like to join us in Santa Fe, New Mexico this November, I'm gifting you an 80% discounted ticket. All you have to do is leave me a rating and a review on iTunes, take a screenshot and email us at help.thecouragetobe at gmail.com and type in event discount to claim your discounted ticket. You can find that email in our show notes as well as the website to our event. I look forward to being your mentor and guide to transform your life. See you in Santa Fe. You mentioned that we're constantly doing, pushing, going, you know, nonstop. And I can identify with that, you know, just like this burnout. I think we had an episode early on in the first ones about burnout and it's with Heather Mills. If you're interested in it, go back to that episode. But I wanted to ask you that Tracy, like when we catch ourselves, especially for busy moms, and if you're a single mom and that's busy and trying to run a business and do, or whether you're running a business or going to work, whatever we have just busy lives can we pause like this just even if it's just for a minute to calm our bodies like how do we start educating our minds and our bodies and our nervous system to start slowing down because that was perfect and i'm sure some people might be listening be like well, i don't have the time to pause and do that right now because i'm in the middle of my walk while i'm listening to this podcast so how can we slow ourselves down, even if it's a fast one minute oh, nervous system? So many things. Okay, there's so many things I need to say. If you are listening and you perceive you don't have time, then you need to do this extra. Because one of the things about your healing and your growth and your ascension, for whatever your catalyst is, whatever the reason is that you are ready, one of the biggest shifts that we all must make is moving from this go, 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 do, 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 busy, 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 constant, 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 into more space, slowing down, changing the pace. If aliens were looking down over us, they would say, where the hell are these people going? Why is everybody running? Is someone getting an award for being the most stressed out and busiest woman in the world? And the reason why I can touch on this, and then we can only go so far in, in right without coming in and doing the work is, this is part of your current identity. Your current identity is living in lack. Why do I know that? Because you perceive you don't have time. What are you communicating to the universe? If you're busy, busy, busy and go, go, go and constant, 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 I'll tell you. You're telling the universe, don't give me more. I can't handle it. I don't have space. You're telling the universe, nope, I have no time. Therefore, I have no time. You are perpetuating scarcity because you're living in that loop. Conversely, Let's look at the evolved version of you. <sighs> Who's trusting, spacious, courageous, intentional. She loves rest. She understands its real true value in her expansion, in more love, more money, more wealth, more abundance, all the things that we want more of. This is part of shifting the paradigms of our life. We've all been operating under these limiting paradigms that were gifted to us by our great, great grandmothers, our great grandmothers, our grandmothers and our mothers. We don't live in their world. We know more, we have technology, we have advancement, we have neuroplasticity, we have body work, we have all of these things that they didn't have. And 
the faster you go and the more constant you are, the more constricted you are, which means the lower your vibration and your frequency. So I'm going to gift you a question that you can start to play with because it's like, what? And it's so helpful. Is my behavior communicating trust? Is my behavior communicating trust? When the answer comes, don't judge it. Just go, oh, whoa. Okay. So that's the first piece. The second piece is one of the first things that we have these gorgeous students of the School of Becoming do when you start mind magic is we set alarms, nervous system love alarms. So I'm going to gift this to you guys because it's so good on our phones for the top of the hour, every hour, because you just asked Tanya for fast. It is fast. Here's the thing about growth and human growth potential. None of it is complex. It is laughably so simple and so digestible. The biggest, let me say it differently, the most challenging component of growth is you actually making a new choice when your system is so aroused by who you're used to being. You actually pausing when that nervous system love alarm goes off. And what are our students doing? What I just taught you. They're doing alternate nostril breathing. They're taking their eyes off the computer and gazing out of the window and just staring into space for 60 seconds and breathing, right? So when that alarm goes off and the thoughts of, I don't need this right now, I feel fine. I'm so busy, I'll snooze it and do it later you need to recognize and deserve to recognize that that's the current identity driving you to stay the same because anything different than who you've been is going to trigger your fear response because anything different than who you've been and how you felt and what you've done is perceived as a threat at the level of your nervous system which is why change happens at the speed of safety you give your system the safety it needs so you can dig into your courage and become the woman you're capable of becoming Oh, that was fabulous, Tracy. Tell me, we didn't finish the story of your $55,000 because we'll go off on Oh my God. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yes. I do want to finish that. How did it end up? You went, I mean, because these are beautiful teachings. I have to go back and re-listen to this podcast because you are dropping so many golden nuggets. And I feel like you are as I'm asking the questions, I see you almost channeling like you are for those of you that are listening and you're not watching, you know, physically like on YouTube or whatever. Like I see your eyes like going into another place, like you're channeling this information. That's why I was like, oh my God, take notes and questions are zooming through. But I do want to come back to yeah. So yeah, you put actually... down a $55,000 mm. contract because you're operating from your higher self or from the higher version of yourself, you know, the future self. Yeah. How did it all unfold? Because oh, you so really good. had to lean into trust and you, you yes. had to just see yes. how it all unfolded. Talk yes. to me about yes. the end of the okay. story. So I know it has a happy good. ending. Well, here's I'm what's guessing. so good. Well, here's what's so good. It's not like I was like, okay, so I did that, you know, and actually some of those steps that I'm breaking down, that's the called the choice method. It's the integration that we teach you inside mind magic, but raise like, so you become aware, you make it safe. You ask what she would do and you go do it. Now I would totally be lying if I was like, so I did it and I signed the contract and I rode up into the sunset and then everybody came, which that was the outcome, but not exactly the path. So I went, I sat down, I signed it. Fear came right back upon me, right? My TED talk is all about fear. So if we could share that with your beautiful listeners, then that'll be helpful because there's a lot of practical exercises in the TED talk. So I signed the contract and then the fear came back upon me and I kept doing the method again and again and again. Oh, I'm aware, for example, I was like, okay, so I did it. I'm excited, did a live stream, made a sales page, put it out there. And then I noticed like we sold a few seats but not very many. And then I stopped and I go, wait a second, what's happening? Well, I 
was pausing. I wasn't booking the DJ. I wasn't buying the swag bag. I wasn't booking the food and beverage menu, but this is important. And that's because I was sitting in fear. I was doing what? I was letting the current reality dictate my perception and my behavior, right? Oh my God, we don't have a lot of tickets sold. What am I going to do? Pause, do the same thing again that I just explained. Oh, I'm aware I'm not taking action like she would, my she, right? So I went, hold on, made it safe, did my thing. Then I booked the DJ. Then I got with my team. What are we putting in these Lux swag bags? And what happened? All of a sudden, ticket sales, ticket sales, ticket sales, ticket sales. Because I was, again, doing the embodiment of her. So anytime you're noticing something's off, you're in training the energy. You're driving the energy of it. So when you pause and go, wait a second, what would the version of me do that is sitting in the success of that thing? It's already done. It's already handled. And then you start to do that in the present moment without the evidence being there. That's when reality catches up. And then it happened again, like midway. And I was like, whoop, we're a little stagnant. What's up, Trace? Go within because it's you. I need you to know this. You are the generator. You are the cause of the effect. You are the driver. You are the common denominator. You are the variable. So you need to stop going outside to shift. It's like, okay, let's run more ads or be strategic. No, not until we go within Tracy and I go, what's going on here? And then you continue to move forward, not as you, but as the future version of you now. And doing that, we landed in a sold out event that then became a five year running sold out event that sold out 80% at the event before we even needed to offer anything to anyone. We were sold out and we just retired the event this year. 2024 was the last powerhouse we ever did. That is awesome. I love hearing that, but I especially love hearing the process and the fears and the work that you had to do through it, you know, because we are so sold Hollywood movies, you know, with the happy ending, but we never see the process in between, you know, and just seeing all that. So thank you for being vulnerable and sharing with us, Tracy, that particular part and how you worked through it. You know, it wasn't like it was handed to you and Oh yeah, by magic, it it just look, you know, I put all the pieces together and it just it happened, you know. I trust it. Yeah, so thank you for that that's not real. It's really important because courage is necessary. It's such a gorgeous, gorgeous thing. And there isn't a person that's had an experience that mirrors the takeoff of an airplane. That's not success, that's not accurate. And it's such a disservice when there are things that portray themselves as such. Your ability to generate success and fulfillment looks more like a heart rate monitor that stays in an upward trajectory. So it's moving up, but it's like up, down, 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 up, 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 down, 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 up, down, up, down, up, down, in a trajectory of increase. That's actual success, sustainable success. I love it. And thank you for sharing this particular part. I want to take another quick pause yeah. and we'll come back to tapping into some of the things that I noticed as you were telling this story. So let's take a quick pause. I want to share an amazing opportunity with you. My signature event, Increase Your Income and Impact, which is happening this November 7th through the 9th in person in Santa Fe, New Mexico. You will walk away from these three days, shifting your mindset from not enough money to manifesting on the spot. You'll also learn how to get over your fears and unworthiness so that you can have a greater impact in the world. These in-person events are life transforming. Just listen to what one of our participants has to say. My name is Donna and I came to this retreat because I ran into Tanya at just the right time and I felt I needed some re-energizing and to be around other entrepreneurial people. So I came and I've gotten so much out of it. I'm re-energized, ready to hit the ground running and expand my business. If you found this inspiring, if you'd like to join us in Santa Fe, New Mexico this November, I'm gifting you an 80% discounted ticket. All you have to do is leave me a rating and a review on iTunes, take a screenshot and email us at help dot the courage to be at gmail.com and type in 
event discount to claim your discounted ticket. You can find that email in our show notes as well as the website to our event. I look forward to being your mentor and guide to transform your life. See you in Santa Fe. You were telling us the story of how you created this amazing event and how you did the work throughout the process, your awareness and tapping into your future version. Me, as you were telling that, it sounds like you are so connected with spirit, with source, you know, and getting to co-create from that space versus the strategic parts, the how we always get into that left side of the brain of like, but how am I going to do it? And then I should run more ads. I should contact more people. I should do more sales calls instead of which that just in itself, as I'm saying it, that energy is like this constrictive energy of like fear energy, but you went into a space of co-creating with spirit. Can we talk a little bit more about that and how you've learned to develop that Tracy? Yes, 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 yes. This is part of our journey back to trust. And I believe that that's what this whole show is about. It's one big journey back to surrender and trust, which requires a dramatic shift in our relationship with fear and with failure. It's the how of within, which is the name of my podcast, right? Like you were saying, we're how the how, and I used to be stuck on the how, how am I gonna do this? How am I gonna how, how? And I was like, wait a minute, there is actually a how we have to pay attention to, but it's the internal how, not the external how. So number one, oh, so, so there's so many things here. You need to believe in something bigger than you, number one, right? We can't talk about a connection to spirit, source, universe, greater intelligence, God, whatever you want to call it. I'm going to continue to call it universe if we don't really believe it. And I've watched a lot of people feel like they believe it, but then as soon as they actually need to believe it, they abort their faith. Now, all of a sudden it's hard. Now, all of a sudden it's not working. And it's so easy to trust the universe when everything's jiving. But where's your faith when you're in a dip? When I was going back to that heart rate monitor, when shit's not going the way you wanted it to go, when you are fallible, when you are failing, when you have made mistakes, when the outcome is not what you intended, no matter how hard you worked for it, do you actually believe or are you faking the funk? Because if you don't actually believe, you won't cultivate a relationship with source. Just like you need to cultivate a relationship with your nervous system and your body, Everything's based in how you relate to it. So that's the first thing. Do you actually believe in something bigger than you? Do you realize that this is not about you or me or any of us? It's so much bigger than us. And we have so much support that is not here in the third dimension of reality, that is not here in our humanness, that these angels, guides, energy, source, God, oneness, connection, it's like ridiculous. So you have to know if you actually believe. Let's assume you do and you're like, yes, Tracy, I am there. Then the next piece is how do you relate to it on a daily basis? Because my relationship with the universe is as active as my relationship with my children, with my husband, right? Like we're in relationship. I'm pausing, I'm closing, I'm like, okay, I'm gonna give this one to you because I've hit my threshold and my limitedness and I need you to take this one, right? It's no different than if you've been really great at prayer, right? So how do you relate to that thing that's bigger than you and allow it to help you, which then brings us back to what we were talking about before about slowing down in spaciousness. You think you're going to hear your intuition, your connection to source when you're jacked up and running around like a chicken with your head cut off? Come on. And I know because I've served so many women globally, I am so blessed to be trusted with your journey. You're not slowing down because you're afraid to feel what comes up when you do. Because we were so taught wrong about feelings and emotion and expression that were so suppressed and repressed that as soon as we slow down a little bit or we get quiet or shit starts to come up and you're like, nope, I'll just put something else on my calendar. And that's a big, big part of this. You're not going to be able to cultivate your highest level of intimacy with that thing that's bigger than you if you're emotionally congested. And constantly keeping busy, you know, like you're saying, it's it, that is so I've seen that over and over. I've experienced it myself, you know, with sure. moments of just like, eh, yeah, I'm not ready to feel that right now. I'm parking it to the side. Let me get busy with something else. Yeah. So, yes, thank you for that reflection. What are some of your your daily practices and connection, you know, with source or just in, in general? What's a day in Tracy's life look like? 
not grabbing my phone immediately when I wake up. So that there's space moving my body because the more I move, the more open I am when we hold so much in our body and not even like, and sometimes I do choose like a fitness class, like a weightlifting or something, you know, bone health, but whatever kind of movement my body's vibing. So it's not, it, it could be yoga, it could be a walk, it could be whatever it is, because that movement keeps my body open. Actually, I'm doing this, uh, I have beautiful calls today, and this is in my schedule for me, because I actually felt it earlier, and I simply didn't have the minutes to do it. I like to lay on the floor in my office and shut all the lights off and put my eye mask on and do a few rounds of really deep holotropic breathing, which is like a cellular release breath work. And within minutes, whatever is gunky in there just comes flying up and out. Sometimes it's a cry, sometimes it's a scream, sometimes it's a grunt. And then I'm open again, because in my experience that the seamlessness of connection, like use the word channeling, you know, that ability to channel, the ability to sense, the ability to notice when my body's getting tight is dependent on the contrast of how often I can spend in lightness and spaciousness in my body. Yeah. That's fabulous. And do you do any meditation or oh, other yeah. ways of connecting with your, like, how do you carve out time? Because I'm of the same school of thought as you are. If you're not making time to connect with your intuition, with your higher self, with source, mm -hmm. with spirit, it's not going to come to you, you know? So what kind of practices do you do with that too? Do you meditate or do you do walking meditations or actually, I mean, we... I love that they're lying on the ground and your I mean, in your office on the floor, I'm going to take that one up because yes, I have like, done the do that. And like pitch black, eye mask on, like shut off the world. That's I the biggest it. part of it. Right. Yeah. And our sense of sight creates the most stimulus of any of our senses, because mm. just constantly, constantly coming in, right? So yes, I am a meditator. I do walking meditation. We actually, I actually have a walking meditation and it's both eye mask, listening, lift the eye mask up, walk and integrate, pull the eye mask back down. Like my husband's always like, yeah, you're the crazy one. Just like standing in the middle of the neighborhood with an eye mask on, like, that's my wife. I'm like, yep but I'm loving my life. So whatevs. And I do, sometimes I do some Dr. Joe meditations. I love that. And I do our meditation. So inside of mind magic, we have a morning protocol and in it, I do a meditation where you are teaching your body, the emotions of the woman you're becoming. So you're going into those scenes and you're going into those experiences and your heart is opening. So it's like a, a way to, become her at the level of your cells and your body. So that way, when you come out of it and you walk through the day, you can let her lead. Fabulous. I love these. Well, as we're coming to an end with this, I would like to ask you first, where can people find you? How can we be part of your community and get to know everything that you're up to in the world? Thank you. The school of becoming.com is a beautiful place to go. So that is our school, the school of becoming.com. And you'll notice a free Ascension assessment, right? When you arrive on the site, T start with the Ascension assessment. It's free. It's so fun. It's like 11 super fun questions. The levity is a very high value of mine. And then you get back a gorgeous, gorgeous results page. And we also send you curated content, like read this and watch this and listen to this based on where you're at. So go to the school of becoming.com and take the assessment. That is great. Thank you so much, Tracy. And one last question. Yeah. I love asking this to all my guests. What would you say can people do to live a life with more courage? Recognize that the truth about your fear is that it needs to be loved. Stop mm. getting mad at your fear. Stop adding resistance to your fear. Recognize that your fear is here to keep you alive and it's doing a great job you're more powerful than it when you learn how to be when you stop letting the fear lead and you do that by loving it by appreciating it, by going thank you for coming around i understand you're just wired for survival but i have dreams and i'm going places and you shift that relationship it thrusts you into being courageous instantly 
Oh, I love it, Tracy. Thank you so much for your energy, for your presence, for your knowledge, for being with us today. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. I enjoyed every second. If you like this episode and you'd like to feel this kind of energy live and in person, I want to share with you about my upcoming event, Increase Your Income and Impact, which is happening November 7th through the 9th in person in Santa Fe, New Mexico. You will walk away from these three days shifting your mindset from not enough money to manifesting on the spot. You'll also learn how to get over your fears and unworthiness so that you can have a greater impact in the world. I'll gift you an 80% discounted ticket. All you have to do is leave me a rating and review on iTunes, take a screenshot and email us at help.thecouragetobe at gmail.com and type in event discount to claim your discounted ticket. I look forward to being your mentor and guide to transform your life. See you in Santa Fe.